Sony's PlayStation 4 is a great console with fantastic games. But best of all, you can use the Gold Hen Homebrew Enabler to install games from backup files. Let me show you how. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. One of the best features of a modded PlayStation 4 is that you can play your games from backup files stored on your internal or external hard drives. Now this means that you don't have to use your original game discs, which helps to preserve them from scratches and any other damage. Now I'll be covering how to make backup files of your discs, updates and DLC downloads in another video, so please do check out my PlayStation 4 playlist to get hold of that when I release it. Now obviously this also means that you can use these backup files to install your games on other PlayStation 4 consoles, and of course you can use other people's backup files to install their games on your PS4. Now whilst this does seem like a great way of getting hold of games, do please bear in mind that the majority of PlayStation 4 games are under copyright and you really do need to check out the regulations in your country to make sure that you're not breaching any copyright laws. Now I did make a video on this a while ago so please do check that out before downloading any game backups from the internet. I would also ask you to be considerate of the game producers and businesses that sell the games, but both new and second hand. It would be terrible if these people weren't able to develop more games or keep their businesses open because we stopped buying real copies of games. So the PlayStation 4 is still a current console with games still being developed, so using unauthorised backup files really can take funds away from these important organisations. So whatever way you choose to get hold of a backup, well, I'm going to start this video by assuming that you've got a game backup file that you want to install. So let's see how to do that. For this project to work, you will of course need a modded PlayStation 4. Now I've already made a video on using the pp-pawn exploit to install the Gold Hen Homebrew Enabler app, so please do have a look at that to get you up and running. But once you've exploited the firmware and got Gold Hen activated, we're good to go. So first off, we need to work out if we have the right sort of package file and that we have a way to transport it to the console. Now package files are complete game disks that have been packaged into a single file. As these files contain everything that was on the original disk, they can be very large, so you'll need a USB storage device that's big enough to deal with them. Now I tend to use spare hard drives with a USB adapter to give me lots of disk space. Now SSDs and 2.5 inch laptop drives just need a SATA to USB adapter cable and they can actually take their power directly from the PS4's USB port. Now you can also use 5.25 inch hard drives but these will need a powered USB adapter to work. Now to make sure the PlayStation can read your USB drive, it does need to be formatted as an XFAT drive. Now FAT32 drives will work with your PlayStation 4, but these can't store files larger than 4GB. And we're going to be using files that can be up to 90GB and above for some of the dual disc games. So XFAT can co easily cope with these. Now you might be tempted to use NTFS or the sort of Linux EXT formatted drives, but please don't uh, as your PlayStation 4 just won't be able to read these. Another option of course is to use FTP to send files from your PC to your console directly over your network. Now Gold Hen has a built in FTP server for just this job. So if you go into the Gold Hen page and then select the servers option, You'll see the FTP and bin loader server checkboxes, and you simply need to check the one for the FTP server. Now you will need to be connected to your home network, either over Wi-Fi or Ethernet, but once you've got a connection, you should see a message saying that the FTP server is active. Now it is going to flash up an IP address, um, and you are going to need that, um, but we can get that from the system settings if you miss it. So back out to the main menu and go into settings, and then system and system information, you should now see the IP address 
of your PlayStation 4 on your network. So, so make a note of this as we're going to need it in a second. So on your computer, you'll then need to sort out some sort of FTP client. Now I use one called FileZilla, which is available for Windows, Mac and Linux, and it does give you a very easy to use file transfer application. So if you head over to this web address, you can simply download the one that matches your computer and then just install it. So once you get it up and running, we can use the quick connect options at the top of the window. So just enter the IP address of the PlayStation 4 that we got um, earlier and put that into the host box. The username and password can be left blank, but the port number needs to be set to 2121 and that will then connect it to the Gold Hen FTP server. So click on connect. It should bring you up then a connection to your PlayStation 4 and you should be able to see a list of folders on your hard drive. So you should now have your PC on one side and the console on the other. So to transfer files, you simply need to find the folders on the um, PC side and then on the PlayStation 4, just make sure that that is showing the place where you want to copy the files to. And you can then just drag and drop them between the two computers. So now that we've got a transfer method, we need to make sure that our package files will work on our console. So, so when you buy a game on disk, there is license information built into that disk. Similarly, when you download a game from the PlayStation Network, you also download license details that unlocks the game files. So package files need to contain this licensing information to allow the games to run on your console. And this also applies then to any DLC and update package files that you might get hold of. So the package files tend to have the .pkg file extension. So we need a way of examining them to make sure that they contain this licensing info. So if you head over to this archive.org page, um, you can download the PlayStation 4 Package Viewer application by Lman. Now you're going to need to extract the downloaded RAR file. And for this, you're going to need an app such as 7-Zip. But once you've done that, you should end up with a set of files like this. So if we now run the ps4packageviewer.exe file, we'll get this window popping up. So if you go to the file menu and open, you can then go and find your package file. So the app will now examine this package file and report back with some information on it. So the bit that we're inter interested in is given in the bottom left corner, where it will either describe the game as official or fake. So we need what are known as fake package files. So the official or, or retail packages are just um, plain dumps of the game files without any of this licensing information. So you would then need to provide your own license information to get that game to run. So the fake package files have all the information that our homebrew enabler needs to decrypt the game and run it all burnt into the package file itself. So we also need to make sure that any extra files we have for a game, for example, sort of DLC content or update or patch files are also for the same game version. So again, if we use our package viewer app, we can check this out. So looking at our .pkg file with the viewer, you can scroll down the information section to find the game ID code. So this identifies the game and version. So if I now look at the details for my update package, you can see that the game ID is the same as my game itself. So this update package will correctly update the game that I have installed. So now that we know we've got unlocked fake package files, we simply need to install them onto the PlayStation 4. And, and, and this really, to be honest, is the easy part of the process. So copy all your .pkg files onto your USB transfer disk and then plug that into your console. Obviously, if you're using FTP, you simply need to copy the .pkg files over to the data folder on your internal hard drive. So next, open up Gold Hen and then into the debug settings. So make sure that the package source is set to USB or hard drive, depending on where you put these files, and then select the package installer. So you should see a list of your packages. 
Now you can either select them individually to install them or, or there should be an install all option which will install all of the package files that it can currently see in one go. So just let that all run through and it might take a bit of time. But once that is finished, um, um, you should now have your game ready to play. Now, as with all bits of software, game developers do release updates and patches to fix issues and add extra functions to the games. Now, mostly you would download these directly from the internet, but if we're using backup files, you, you don't want to use these official downloads. They can stop the game from working. But you should be able to get hold of fake package files that will do the updates for you. Now, as we saw earlier, you do need to make sure that the update files match the game ID that you're using. But once you've confirmed that, you just need to install the package as normal. Now, it is good to install these updates, uh, as some of the DLC content that you might want to use will need them. So, so, so lastly, then, we can, of course, look at these DLC package files. And you can install those, of course, using Gold Hens Package Installer. And as, as usual, uh, after verifying that the game ID for the pa DLC package matches your actual game itself. So that should give you enough information to install your backed up game packages directly onto your hard disk. Now, if you've been using FTP to transfer your games onto the console, then you can now delete the .pkg files to free up some of your space. Now, the last thing that I want to cover in this video is how to make your game library look a bit better. Uh, so for this, we're going to use a homebrew app called Items Flow. Now, this app does a whole lot of useful things. Um, so it's one that you really do need to install. Uh, and I will be covering all of the things that it can do in another video. But, but for now, we'll just use it to give us a great game library viewer and launcher. So homebrew apps can be installed just the same way as any other package by downloading the .pkg file and then using Gold Hens Package Installer. But another option is to just install a single homebrew store app and then get that to do all the hard work for you. So if you head over to the packagezone.com website, um, you, you, you'll get here. Now, you can download a whole range of PlayStation 4 homebrew apps, but if you install the homebrew store app, you can then do all of that work directly from your PlayStation. So just click on the store download button and save the package file then to your USB transfer drive. Then take that over to your PlayStation 4 and install it, uh, install it as normal with Gold Hens Package Installer. So you should now have the homebrew store on your XMB. So open that up and you'll get a browsable library of homebrew applications. So if you, if you have a look in here, you'll, you'll find sort of games, utilities, emulators and a whole lot more. So we should be able to find items flow in the main category. And once you do, all, all you need to do is to select that to install it. So this will download the package file and add it to your console in one easy step. If you now go out to your XMP, you should see items flow sitting there ready for use. So select it and it will probably ask you about downloading some cover art and so on. Uh, if you are connected to the internet, let it do this uh, and it will then go off and find your box art for your games and apps. So once complete, you should land back on the game library view where you can easily scroll, scroll through all of your games and apps. Now, as I said, this app does a lot more than just make your library look pretty. So keep an eye out for my items flow video by making sure that you're subscribed to the channel. If you've enjoyed this episode, then please do make sure to like it. And if you have any questions, do contact me through the comments section. So that should give you everything you need to get your backup files and get gaming on your PlayStation 4. So I hope to see you in another modding, gaming or making project very soon. And bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.